we turn now to our next reading of Scripture, coming from the book of James, chapter 1, verses 17 through 27. Every generous act of giving with every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow due to change. In fulfillment of his own purpose, he gave us birth by the word of truth, so that we would become a kind of first fruits of his creatures. You must understand this, my beloved. Let everyone be quick to listen, slow to speak, slow to anger. For your anger does not produce God's righteousness. Therefore, rid yourselves of all sordidness and rank growth of wickedness and welcome with meekness the implanted word that has the power to save your souls. But be doers of the word and not merely hearers who deceive themselves. For if any are hearers of the word and not doers, they're like those who look at themselves in a mirror. For they look at themselves and on going away immediately forget what they were like. But those who look into the perfect law, the law of liberty, and persevere, being not hearers who forget, but doers who act, they will be blessed in their doing. If any think they are religious and do not bridle their tongues but deceive their hearts, their religion is worthless. Religion that is pure and undefiled before God the Father is this, to care for orphans and widows in their distress, and to keep oneself unstained by the world. The grass withers and the flower fades, but the word of the Lord lives forever. And this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I'll tell you what, James does not like to let us off easy, does he? James knows that we don't always listen well. He knows that we're often too quick to speak. This in itself is very important, even before getting into the nuance that James puts on it. Just the other day, I was at the Nurture and Certification Orientation uh, for this year. And for those of you who are like, orientation what? Nurture and Certification. It's a program involving teams of ministers and lay leaders who meet with seminary students seeking ordination. Our task is to be a support group for them and to guide them through and hold them accountable to the necessary steps uh, toward being ordained. This is actually where I already knew our student minister, Paula, from. Uh, she has been meeting with the team that I'm on for the past couple of years. I've gotten to know her quite well. At any rate, at the orientation, one of the things brought up is the importance of us as a team listening to the students. This was a point of conversation because a student mentioned it on their feedback form uh, about, whenever, or about whatever team they were meeting with about them needing their team to listen more and talk less. Sometimes it becomes an issue of team members talking too much, sharing stories, opinions, and whatever else, trying to be helpful. I'm sure it's hard for you to imagine a minister being long-winded. <laughs> but still, uh, the problem with that is that the students lose out on their opportunities to talk to the group about stuff that they're dealing with. One of the most important reasons they're there. Hearing James in today's passage should help us all remember that sometimes it's more helpful and supportive to close our mouths and open our ears, slower to speak and quicker to listen. It can be easy to forget that. Now about that nuance that James puts on it. James was offering that teaching with something in mind. How we deal with stuff that makes us angry. Quick to listen, slow to speak, slow to anger. 
For anger does not produce God's righteousness. Really, that hits the nail on the head right there. Chill out with all the anger because it doesn't produce God's righteousness. Of course, it would be nice if it were as simple as it sounds. It's understandable that there are things that will drive you to anger, but don't be driven there too quickly. Don't just see something you don't like and get all mad at a drop of a hat. Take time to think about it and be sure that this is something that really calls for anger. Anger isn't to be taken lightly. Anger alone does not produce what's right on God's standards. Now my favorite quote from St. Augustine comes to mind here. And I think you've heard me say it before, but it's my favorite quote, so you're going to hear it again, and you'll probably hear it some more times after this. Hope has two beautiful daughters. Their names are anger and courage. Anger at the way things are, courage to make them the way they ought to be. Sometimes anger does have a purpose. It can help to produce God's righteousness when it's for a good reason and it's paired up with courage to do something about the problem, to make it the way it ought to be instead of the way it is. Those two things together can produce righteousness in that there is hope, hope for the world, hope for the future. But it doesn't help anything to just be angry. To just be running around mad all the time. Or to be angry without a good reason for it. Or to hear, hear about something and jump right into anger without pausing to think about it first. It can be easy to forget that. Last week I mentioned that Center for Leadership conference uh, that we went to with our daughter. A college prep conference for youth and parents. One of the, one of the workshops we had um, had a high school counselor speaking to us about the SAT and the ACT tests and preparations. Although she also mentioned a number of other things while talking. And it kind of jumped out to me when she talked about having a daughter who comes home talking about a teacher getting on her case. Of course, as a parent, your first reaction might be to get upset about it. Like, oh no, that teacher isn't picking on my baby. Then you ask what happened, and she's like, all I said was such and such, and the teacher did this and that. It's no fair. Of course, what she didn't mention uh, was all the attitude that accompanied the such and such that she said to the teacher in the first place. In reality, she probably did have a lot more to bring, she probably did a lot more to bring trouble on herself uh, than she was describing. Teenagers have this uncanny ability to only tell you what they want you to know. As a parent, being quick to anger at the teacher about the situation uh, might be totally unjustified. Now, if I take time to think about it and learn more about the situation before reacting, and I learn that the teacher really was being unfair, then sure, anger might be justified and useful along with courage to do something to bring about change so that no one is treated unfairly. If I learn that she has done something to bring trouble upon herself and deserve the trouble, then there's other things that I could do in response to help bring about God's righteousness in the situation. It can be easy to forget that. You know, the biggest trouble with being so quick to anger is the destructive negativity that comes out of it. James says that we've got to rid ourselves of rank sordidness and wickedness. That, that dirty stuff that, that just grows and, and can easily come out of us. 
This is the kind of stuff Jesus was talking about in that passage from Mark today. He was catching a hard time because his disciples ate without washing their hands according to the law. And Jesus explained that it wasn't that, or not washing stuff from the market before eating it, or the not washing bowls and pots before eating them. It's not any of that that's the real problem. Not following those food laws is not something that defiles you, makes you unclean. It's not what goes into your body that defiles you, but it's what comes out of you that, defile, that can defile you. Jesus explains that, that list, um, adding to sordid and wicked, uh, sordidness and wickedness um, that comes out of our bodies to also include things like fornication, theft, murder, adultery, avarice, deceit, licentiousness, envy, slander, pride, and folly. James's message is just like Jesus' message in that we've got to get rid of that stuff. We've got to watch ourselves and not fall into that behavior so easily. Take time to think about it. Take time to pray about it and straighten out our own behavior. To look closely at ourselves and who we are and the things we do. To be very cautious about any behavior that might lead us into that dark negativity that brings so much trouble in the world in so many ways. It's bad for us, and it's bad for the world. Like a person glancing at themselves in a mirror and forgetting what they look like. If we just hear these messages and don't put our words into practice consistently, it's very easy to forget what we've been taught. If we do, if we practice these messages, not just hear them, but if we do them day in and day out, we will be blessed in our doing. Blessed by our lives falling into place. Blessed by the benefits of our actions uh, as they uh, are given to others. Blessed by our, uh, our peace of mind that we gain. Blessed by the thoughtfulness and beauty that we bring into the world. Pure and undefiled religion means hearing and doing. It means caring for orphans and widows in distress. Offering ourselves as instruments of God's peace in the world. Welcoming the divine implant that we have received. That is God's word. As a doctor might place an implant inside of us, God has placed the word inside of us. The word that has the power to lead us away from wickedness and to save our souls. It's about stepping back and taking a moment to hear that word speak to us and lead us in the proper direction. In fulfillment of God's own purpose, God gave us birth by the word of truth so that we would become a kind of first fruits of all the creatures. By God's grace, may we be the people that God made us to be. People who give generously as God gives to us. Good listeners, thoughtful speakers, slow to anger, and quick to care for people in need, always seeking God's righteousness. Amen.